<laughs> that was good though. It was cool. I was uh, trying something new. Trying something. New. Hey, you should it's never be mocked. Voice, you should never be mocked for trying something new. Um, but if it doesn't work, don't repeat it. Then yeah. But that well, I think that worked for me. What doesn't work here is that shit. Go on. We're not having a double. Hard destruction ban, as we did earlier on in the day. We are going to have the limitation on Thatcher, which, to be fair, that's pretty standard. He is still the most banned person, uh, operator. We just got confirmation that the social votes was swapped. So was C2 swapped. Was 83%. Wait, I didn't get the confirmation of that. Well, production just told me. Why did they just tell you? I don't know. Bruno maybe production. likes it anymore. Wow. Do you not trust me with this information? Understandable. Okay, Yonkers <laughs> left the game. They just swallowed those wins. Okay, Every, everything is falling apart. Uh, <laughs> we'll finish this band then, I assume, before we get Yonker back and we might end up back on our cam, so be ready for that. But <laughs> it still gives us a little bit to talk about because Capitao is a ban. It's not the most outrageous. You think of rafters. Yonka. So typical. G2 Yonka and internet issues. Internet. That's a shame. Everywhere. Either way. Capitao indeed. Very strange ban as the my now uh, finishes up the job. I can understand the uh, Kate ban. Uh, the Capitao ban is... Um, it's very specific. It's very specific to certain takes and certain push up on the bottom because that's hey. truly the only way you can try and counter it. But there's always the expectation that everything gets opened. Or not explicitly everything, but a lot gets opened. One of the very fun, cool statistics that was talked about mm -hmm. um, that I'm not going to take credit for because it was Ace that does all this number crunching. He's a very, yes. very, very clever man, very talented with a spreadsheet. And he did this whilst we were walking to the studio today. And I don't know how he multitasked that much because... I'm pretty sure he did it beforehand, but he was, I don't know. He was telling us about it while we were walking. He's talented. Either way, He's very talented. he noted that before this playday started, Bandit had been played three times, I think it was. It was mm -hmm. only three times. Bandit tricking, all those concepts have been sort of pulled away. Sure, the prime map that we've seen this season so far in EU has been Consulate, which for a bandit, there is some possibility, but not a huge amount. Yeah. Kaid is the safer bet and the gamble there because you expect them to have the chance on the swing on yellow or in the controller piano. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting to see such a drop-off. And I'm saying this now because obviously the thatch is gone. There's the limitation without Kaid. So we're going to have a game with bandit. We're going to get this sort of old taste here. Yeah. And now it's something where... You know, uh, because it's been removed, if it was a limitation before, is it something that's an adaptation that will, because it feels a bit strangely fresh, have a little bit more of an impact? Now, I was going to say, due to the fact that you cannot really trick as a bandit on that bottom floor, we will see it deployed on different instances. For example, inside a construction wall, you now see Hungry around on the jacuzzi wall as well, making sure that there will not be an opening there. In the meantime, though, as he's rotating back, the opening into CCTV has already been made, and the drones are coming out to try and find some information as well, which surely should be found quickly by one of these G2 members. And Black Eye quickly being tossed out, and Slubbin hears that, sees that, and will take care of it. Now Citizen is well aware of the fact that there is players around as well. Now, in the previous game where things didn't quite go the way for Secret, Slevin and Gomfi couldn't quite find their way in at all for two players that had such an astounding start in joining this sort of roster, for them to be shut out by Virtus Pro for that big sort of blow and limitation, it was something that cost Secret. So you're assuming and hoping, obviously, as a Secret fan, to see a little bit more of them as the opener here. Virtue is going to pull back. They're not going to try and dig in. They know the hold's a bit of a stretch. Citizen going on an adventure via Strip. It's a gamble, but to be fair, if anyone can do it, it is Citizen. He is this, obviously, player who has put up absolutely ludicrous numbers throughout the play session so far, and his consistency yeah. with that exploration is something where he can punish players in this sort of situation. So, though he might find himself isolated, he is more than capable of being able to shoot his way out of it. Now, keep in mind, a lot of the time has already been wasted. There is 70 seconds left, and only now Secret is starting to work towards the first floor. It means that only now they're starting to open up these vertical holes and vertical angles that they might need to set themselves up for a push. And that even also means that the hatches haven't even been able to be opened up yet. Of course, there is plenty of utility available to make happen. And as they are trying to take all the control as quickly as they possibly can, they are making sure it happens quickly as well. But they still need to collapse to the side at some point. 
Citizen has gone unchecked, and they've sort of trusted that, as is the usual, all the bodies have fallen back down to the site from the routes that they had. Oftentimes, you know, you'll very rarely see an exploration round onto Strip, as I said before, and now with 30 seconds, that it gives him that sort of go-ahead. They've got this opening body. All attention is now focused towards the site. There might be some pings and in intel, but as Pac-Bull is trying to find his way round on the backside of pipes, that allows this pressure to come in from behind. They've re-evaluated, restructured, and reapplied themselves. The spray comes over the Shoulder. They get Citizen on the backside, but they're struggling on the front as the spray goes behind the big blue box. There it is, dug around the corner. Kayak gets one more and one more for his trouble in G2 hold firm. Now this realm was very effective, you can say. A lot of time was wasted here for Secret. First, they open up the CCTV wall with the Maverick. That means that some of that fuel is used and also some of the uh, impacts, of course, to make sure that opened up. Then after that, they also put a lot of the Xkaros, I believe it was a total of 12 at least, up until the Jacuzzi wall. And that leaves you with limited utility to go for a full take execute. And as well as at the moment they actually started entering that top floor, there was only 1 minute 30 left on the clock. So they were forced to go quite quickly. And if you have to go quickly on that basement, you are going to be missing these key positions. You're not going to be allowed to clear out these key positions. And G2 made perfect use of that. 1-0 to zero are in the lead. And we see the shotgun holes being made in the CCTV wall that will be used to annoy the hell out of Packbull because he's going to be on that Torch, and he has to open it up two straight lines. And I can tell you one thing, if it has been opened up like that, and that is also a tip for you in ranked, um, it is going to be very hard to open up a straight line. You are going to be very exposed trying to, well, cut together the last pieces. And especially in CCTV, you can get quite long angles by just going prone and trying to check underneath. Of course, you are under a bit of pressure because someone can repel up on the side of the plateau and put some pressure back at you. But there is an opportunity to challenge the Maverick here, especially if you open up like that. All right, let's see how this change towards the Bandit might play off. Are they able to catch some of the pressure? Are they able to stop the pace of Packable here? Who, to be fair, his job hasn't arguably changed too much. And by the looks of it, actually, the Bandit isn't even strictly trying to counter against this wall as of yet. He's looking through the drone hole to see if he can get a bit of a spray, but there's nobody that's just in that range. Citizen opens up himself the hatch as the way out a little bit later. They're sort of prepping themselves and restructuring to do a bit of a hold here and letting the Maverick work because, as we sort of said about this wall, it doesn't really matter what you have as a hold, this wall will generally fall. So there's no point trying to dedicate and throw yourself entirely at it unless you go for something a little bit out there and aggressive like the impacts that's exactly how they're playing they're great at wasting time before g2 they're going to do more of the same here flank drones being set up here by slebin in the pirate flank quite a nifty one we'll be making sure that anybody moving up from these main stairs will be caught out and Slevin is uh, very aware of the fact that there might be some black eyes located. I think he missed the one that is on the lamp inside the construction and will now be giving away some of the information to the G2 players if they're on them. Kayak still spotting. Citizen are thinking about it going, uh, going for a bit of a run out. As they do know that there is no one currently up on the plateau. He's going to do some preparation work. Or actually just swung into the claymore and knew he could take it down right before. It would actually explode. Had the angle, puts a bit of a risk, but obviously with that drone going through at the same time, they're well aware that that has now become a much more dangerous place. That Valcam dug in the corner by the bits of wood is going to be a bit of a problem later on, and obviously that's something where they can't so quite get again. rid of that. Here it is over the top. A Whoa. perfect grenade from Slebin is able to remove Yonka from the hole that he has on the backside. That starts to force a little bit of a shuffle. You've still got Hungry playing underneath, and Hungry still has that C4 in pocket as well. So that could be a bit of a danger if it goes unchecked with this minute mark about to pass. It depends how far and how deep they try to dive themselves. Citizen is trying to find this wide fight, but otherwise cannot quite see or get the angle on the body as the rest of the work still being done in construction. I think Hungry might be going from below as Citizen goes for the run out and takes down the plateau pressure. Hungry is below. Has a nitrous cell available? Actually just used it or pre-placed it. Yeah, it is pre-placed as we speak. And as Packbull finishes up the job, they have the breach that they might want to go for. Another grenade gets tossed in and will we'll dislocate Cav for just a little bit. But Packbull in the meantime for the plant. Nitrous cell comes out, gets the kill and a down. And suddenly it's only up to Gumphy and Keenan in a 2v4 situation to try and clutch this out. As Keenan goes for the pickup. It's wow. only up to the two of them. Great take there from Keenan to go for the swing, but it's two of them funneling in from the same side. Citizen finds himself deeply injured, and they're able to move in in the back, but 
There's still that back line, and they're able to spray through and hold on. That C4 we both talked about underneath became a big bit of the play, and then from then on, it was just a pretty standard shutout. Mew Jammer activating in time, making sure that the x -Kyros, the second set, or the second wave of x -Kyros, was not able to detonate. And with that, of course, the Maverick had to, again, put some pressure in, which takes some time. And that all came back in the end when the Nitro, of course, got the injure and the kill. Again, wasting a lot of time having to go for that pickup. Then having to pick up the diffuser. Having to go for a plant again. It's G2 leading 2-0. to zero. Is now Hungry said it's my turn on the Valkyrie. <laughs> and he's going to pick that one up. I like how G2's not trying to hide their trap operators. No. They're trying to hide the most normal operators and swapping them out to a Valkyrie. And yet we do not see an IQ, for example, on, on the side of Secret. I mean, I think that was the thing about the Valkyrie there, was that intel, we said that that camera had been up there a while, yeah. gave them the idea on the Claymore, and then gave them even more when they utilized it for Citizen to get that swing out on the door. It's... Exactly. A, it's such a powerful operator in the right hands, and G2 is entirely the right hands. Uh, Kayak shot Hungry twice. Yeah, that <laughs> Kayak. Don't do that. That's mean. In before you get the red triangle. <laughs> I know, it's uh, sorry, lad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not uh, the perfect way to start, but to be fair, the 2 0 up. And it's not been entirely out there for Secret. Secret have been able to pull some good stuff together there. Taking a little bit of time to pull a bit of pace. Obviously, only found two kills on the very first round. To be fair, that second round was much better. They'd been able to flood in the site. They almost had it if it wasn't for a C4 that got one and down. That had just been one. It could have been much better. It would have allowed them to keep the pressure on instead of having to pull back. And they could have tried to take a little bit more solidity. And it's just those sort of moments where, you know, as soon as they've done something to pull something out of the push, it allowed Citizen and Virtue to restructure and recreate a backline that was able to hold on. And especially Citizen getting the kill onto the men on the plateau is going to be so helpful as that grenade. It's going to deal a little bit of damage to Citizen. Nothing too much. He was able to just move out in time. But as I was saying, suddenly there's no more pressure coming from Plateau. And as soon as you can freely move across there, it's going to be very easy for you to go for a bit of a retake when you do not have to worry about that long angle to be watched. As in the meantime, you hear the Xkaros being deployed. It's Keenan on the Jacuzzi wall, of course. A total of 12 of them. We'll be making sure there's a rotation and an angle that can be used to uh, hold off the, the hallway. But Kayak is well aware and rotates himself into the gym whilst Packbull's still working on opening up some lines of sights in the heart walls, of course, with that breaching jo uh, torch. He's trying to make it hard for G2, but so far they haven't really been too worried. They let the Maverick do their job. That's all fine and okay. As soon as he uh, starts to rotate out, they catch someone off on surprise. Well, they've done a little bit to take some of the space that they need. They've done a little bit of structural damage and some physical damage to the bodies that were on the CC side, but they haven't been able to catch anybody. G2 is playing a very good cat and mouse game. They're able to make sure Secret aren't quite in the right position or quite sharp enough to pull a body out here. Hyfe has to be aware of this. and I don't think he is. Well, here's the impact ready to rock and roll. They're going to hit the wall and go for it, and Hyfe oh, just takes up. it. Ah, kudos, Medics, for keeping the camera there. How does he know? Well, Kayak knows exactly where somebody is out there. Takes even more damage. He's going to try and desperately find himself freedom, but with a need to reload that gun, it takes a little bit longer than he probably wanted, and he's still not quite found it. Hyfe gets his second, and this is Secret with a lot more going for them. The drop on the C4. Hungary's able to swap back to his other weapon just in time, and it pops off. Packbull creeps his way through the site. They've got the read that one of them's underneath. They're not 100% on where Virtue is as of yet, so they're just going to stick it in the corner. Oh, apparently they are. Catch him on the door and catch the first round. And that is the plan. Not succeeding, but the round will be for Secret. Citizen trying to go for the run out there. Really made it snowball for them. And took care of that roamer. No longer you have to worry. And from then on, you can just put pure pressure. Secret able to, as you said, make sure that the site was theirs quite quickly and displaced the players of G2. Now able to fight back for at least a round, making sure that the rotation could not be completed, but G2 will treat it as it is. Of course they will, as they head back to Church Arsenal, the first site they were on. Now the big question will be, is there going to be another big row? Is there going to be another heavy roam on the G2 side? And if there is, 
Will Secret be aware and will Secret respond to it by maybe rushing the site? Because we have seen how effective that can be, especially on the bottom floor, where if you manage to get through, and it's going to be very hard for the retake on the defender's side, especially if no verticals or anything are in place. Citizen is back on the Valkyrie for this site as they played it before. They're back in a position to put those cams out, which are causing a lot of problems, I think, because G2 building behind that information, G2 going for these strikes around the side and sort of taking advantage. Sure, they didn't quite pull off before in, the, in, in terms of before being the last time they were on this site, but at the same time, Look at that hype. Just the swing round. Just couldn't get the right movement out of that impact. Tried to find the angle, I think, and well, hype was there a little bit sharper. But as I was saying, he's more than a player that's capable to look at where he thinks things went wrong, citizen, and go, well, this is how I can still put myself. And that's what Valkyrie allows you to do. That allows you that growth within exploration of a map and the intel that you want to provide yourself. Definitely so. Intel can be created by yourself, just these odd places every now and then in key positions where they are hard to spot. Let's kind on the main cam, one of the default cams. We'll be spotting out some of these drones coming downstairs and Citizen's trying to put up an ambush. We'll get him in the second uh, second attempt though. It's so hard to spot those cams behind mm -hmm. these little cracks behind these lights and it's going to open up some very long angles all the way from the top. He's going to make sure that he's not going to get C4'd. I think it's a fair worry because we know that G2 have played with a lot of C4s in pocket and we know they've been very good with them as well. They had themselves prepped and preempted the destruction when they were on the CC. There is a C4 prepped and the ping is there to say, hey, as soon as they come on that Valk cam, please let me know and I'll pop it. Not a second later. The impact to oh, get the spray. There is that talk and the intel and how well it can work, citizen. Strikes against Gonfi, removes him as he was entirely caught. The buck is gone. They've at least done some of the soft destruction they need to, but I think they still had a lot of the controller kitchen left, and that's going to make things very cautious. Information is very key here and secret so far, not deciding to go for a counter on it. And that means that Keenan now will be blown up because he's about to walk over that nitro cell. At least he's thinking about it. Drone is currently hovering over it. It's not really the target you're trying to find. Oh, it gets pre-pinged. All right. Probably from below, using the Gon 6 there to get rid of it. Fair enough. Safety first. You know you know it's otherwise going to be something where you can't really pass and it would be too dangerous to bait. They're, they have the man advantage. They can, if they truly want to, dedicate someone solely ready to keep an eye on that and make sure that it is something that pops successful. And you don't have much time. You have to try to capitalize on this minute that you've got left when you had a minute. Now it's 40 seconds. Now you have a couple of hatches open, but you still don't have anybody on that floor. How are you going to prep yourself for the take here? Last time it came a little bit debonair. You threw yourself sort of into the gauntlet that was the G2 hold on the back line, and it's kind of turning into the same story. Modo seems the most obvious approach at this moment in time, but how well they can read that above is always down to our omnipotence. Hyfe has at least read it, tries to spray through the close wall, but it's hungry. That's on the corner. Citizen goes down right behind the A-box on the far side, and Packpool's going to use this to try and plant behind it. Kayak going for long-range smoke there. It is catching Packpool, and he has to swing to get the kill. It's suddenly a five versus nobody, that though. Flawless round. As they flawless it. Citizen was down there, but it didn't matter in the end. They realized the plant was going down because Citizen, of course, in that DBNO state, will be able to call someone dropped. They're in default plant, and you instantly saw every single body of G2 moving towards a position where they could try and, first of all, contest the hatch to allow a second member, whilst that gunfight is going on, to sneak up and kill the planter. And then again, a flawless round, just pushing up their G2. They're wasting so much time, and it starts off so well as, you know, on, with the entry onto that buck. Just the camera, giving the information, the map knowledge, knowing you can go for the impact, and you can go for that kill. That is exactly why that camera is in that spot. And sure, that is not going to work another time when you're going to be playing Clubhouse on, on EUL level, GSA even, because uh, people are going to be reading that one and will be taking care of that cam, or at least check if it is in that position. But either way, for now, it works. And you heard it on the desk many, many times before. If it wins you a game, it is already worth it. 3-1. Still not out there and still steadily building. And I still think Secret are in this game. I think it's 
fair to say they're putting up a fight, even though that round ended in a flawless. They had an idea of what they wanted to do, but they just couldn't quite get the solidity to make it happen. Yep, you can see two players, four and five, both pinged to say, hey, he's on ping. <laughs> took a while if you put it in replay. Not just on ping, but he's on both pings. It's the MPX. It's true. Like, I think he hit a lot of the railing as well in the, in the process. But. Yeah. The MPX, even in the best hands in the world, is still a pea shooter. Teletam. <laughs> I think they disagree. I think they have a different MPX. <laughs> There's Their MPX is plus 20 damage. Their MPX is on another level, but... Okay, it's still the spray through. And look at this. Citizen is still trying to find that instant aggression, that early sort of play there. And these sort of off angles there on the kitchen window, and we talked about it on the strip hold before, he's really truly stretching this map and exploring everything that it has to offer. And, you know, that's the danger of Citizen. Cam's doing some work here. Virtue, of course, in a safe position, giving a lot of information out, telling Citizen what is safe, what is opened up, and what he could be expecting any pressure to come from. Trying to go for a pre-fire there. That surely was uh, fed by that drone that Hungary saw drive away. He'll escape with his life and all of his HP points. Of course, they have the information back on them as well with that evil eye that's just outside there. And again, secret, not deciding to go with an IQ, even though that there's so much information being fed towards the side of G2. Right? It's sort of... It, I guess it's one of those things where watching it back, they'll probably be like, okay, and other teams are looking at this, it's like the amount of times that G2 have had these cameras, these very yeah. wide pools of intel, and whether it's external, whether it's internal, most of these rounds, G2's sort of structure has been built around great cam placement. And it's so much tougher for them to know that when they're not seeing all these great cams and all the intel that Team Secret has. I can't remember what it's called in the sort of high school drama lessons you take when they say when the audience knows something, but the people on the stage don't, and it makes it more dramatic. I know what you mean. It's, it's also it's movies. That. Uh, yeah, it, it's yeah. entirely that. Is the audience is like, no, don't go in there, because they have a camera and a C4, but it's stuff that when you're in there is impossible to know. It does indeed take extra information. Grenade being tossed in. We'll be taking care of the mute gemmer also. I believe that was a... Banshee there located, not quite sure, something at least in CCTV that got taken care of and it allows them to start opening up the wall in construction now and this time all oh, Xkaros will be exploding and with 35 seconds left on the clock, Secret need to make a move, they need to make a decision now and they are still split, they have the opportunity of rotating through, jumping in the CCTV window but for now it seems like Cash will be the play, Hungary still below, has a Nitro in hand and we could see the exact same, oh there we go, that's one Nitro, that will take care of pack pool, but there's still one left. Virtue and Kayak find one apiece as well. There's one more. G2 were massively positioned. They knew where it was coming oh, from, and they thread two flawless rounds in a row on two different sites, on two different stories. And the way to break this down is due to the fact that G2 has this much information. They're able to stall a lot of time super safely because they know when they're getting pushed, so they will fall back in that case. Whereas, you know, Secret is working to get the information. They are droning, actively trying to figure out where are they, where are they going. And all G2 did is they just put up a camp on where they can be challenged from. Mm -hmm. They play around there. They hope to be hunted. And as soon as the camera is like, all right, one or two people are dropping, they fall back. They go downstairs through the basement, they go back to the site, and suddenly you wasted two minutes from Secret's time. And that means that those are two minutes that they have not left to try and make sure they could go for an execute or try and prep, uh, prepare for an execute because you saw it just a second ago again. Nitro cell from below, pre-placed, takes down the diffuser. There was even an extra player down there to even throw an extra Nitro if necessary. And that is just due to the fact that Secret does not have time to deal with these issues because they're hunting so uh, like aggressively. But G2, with all the information, able to completely avoid any form of confrontation. They took the shotgun off Kayak. Uh, no longer on Frost. Not allowed to shoot Hungry again. Twice. 
Uh, good choice. <laughs> Saves with some HP. Who knows? Maybe he would have clutched if he had the extra 20. Maybe. I guess you we'll never know. I guess we'll find out. No, okay. A bit of a change and a bit of an adaptation. They're not going to play the traps. You said before, last time we were here, uh, they were sort of loud about the trap operators. They said, well, yeah. we're not going to hide the frost. We're going to change this expect this. Instead, this time they're going with a plan B. They're more than happy to sort of show that and build behind that. They still have the mute, which is a massive consistency mm -hmm. in a lot of games nowadays. And they've sort of got the stack of the Intel uh, with the mirror to catch inside the bathroom. It's pretty standard when she's still on the board yeah. to have her here. It gives you extensions you otherwise wouldn't have. And then the Maestro. Great gun, big gun, big angles. Go Burr. Oh, my sword does go brute indeed. Is, uh, right here you see that extra hole being created. That is to provide a bit of cover if anybody will be trying to challenge Pack Bull in his current form. Wall has been opened up, however, and that means they have an entry into CC. But that's not it. They still need to take cash whilst in the meantime, Kaya just quickly placing some extra evil eyes. Why not, you know? Just, just try and make sure that there's extra utility they have to waste. And as they open up into Jacuzzi, Hungary was like, let me reinforce the wall on the left and put up a double mirror strategy on the Jacuzzi side whilst Packpool gets a grenade kill onto Yonka. I think the grenades and the explosives have been generally very well played from Secret. They know exactly where they want to try and pull stuff out and try and take bodies. And frequently they've been able to do a lot of damage. <laughs> hey, there's the window popped open. There's the idea of I'm going to try and put some fight against this. It's going to make things a little bit awkward on the approach now as you're still sort of looking at what they've got left in the pockets and the Habana is their obvious go-to. Oh no, wait, there's a mute jammer there. Oh no, wait, there's this Maestro camera that we talked about before that is entirely why it's there. As soon as those pellets get popped towards that wall, they are so ready smart to just alder them away. Because the one that, alder, zap them. The one that's open, they're, they're okay with losing. That doesn't matter. It's already opened up and it's just there to try and fire through or try and get some, uh, some, some nitros through. But the one that is still close is, of course, the safeguard of Hungary in that current position. And Secret have decided to forfeit that side of the map as they lost the diffuser. They now need to recover that. And, of course, want to go for a different approach as well because that mirror setup is going to be very difficult to get through. Slebin will still stick around, has an opportunity. He's thinking about it. Citizen goes to the jump out and drops the diffuser yet again. Oh, no. Someone just recovered it. Now they have to send yet another member or go for all the kills. But with Citizen in the position he is in, they need to make sure that they are splitting their resources and they just do not have the manpower for that. Yeah, 30 seconds. The diffuser in a pretty much impossible position to get it out of without having to go for a big clear there on Kitchen. There's a rotation that's come through underneath as well to try and stop this immediacy, but Gonfi's dug their way in. Just no didn't way. see the head hidden behind the porcelain throne. They know where the swing is, and they're at least able to get the body out, but you've got 10 seconds, you've got no diffuser, and you've got players across two different stories right now. There is no real way that you can pull this round together. You've tried to find oh, this kill, Citizen. but Citizen has found one of his own, almost got both. And G2, 5-1 on their defensive half. 5-1 on their defensive half indeed, and that is very dominant, you would dare to say. But if I recall correctly, and I'm gonna scroll back, we had a match last week, or not really last week, it was even it was, this week yeah. itself. It was on Monday, and we were watching, witnessing Kavana play G2. G2 started on defense on Cafe Dostoevsky. Now, guess what the, the, the halftime score was? Well, I casted it, so... Oh, we, yes, we did, actually. Yeah. But still guess. Okay. Uh, I guess it was 6-0. Uh, no, you're, you're wrong. Oh, how am oh, I wrong? How are you wrong? Oh. I thought you would know as you cast know. it clearly, but... I'm, I, you can tell me now. I know, it's 5-1. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're 5-1 <laughs> again. So there is an opportunity. There is always Hello. an opportunity that we are going to go quite close. We are in a bit of a timeout now, as you can see right above us. Secret called it. It is the timeout that goes... Oh, wait. That way. That way. That, that way, indeed. That way. 40 seconds they have to try and convene, to try and find out what is going wrong because they're about to go into the second half. They're on the defense themselves. And what we've seen from G2 in terms of strategy, in terms of setup, is not something you would consider default clubhouse. It has been... It's, well... Not default clubhouse. <laughs> it's been, yeah, it's been a bit of an exploration. I think yes. the main part of that is the Valkyrie. I still definitely true. More than happy and more it than adamant to sort of say, about it. yeah, that was the build behind all of their holds. That idea of we can have intel wherever we want and we can go wherever we want and we can sort of have that pull together was just a consistency. And it was something that Secret they either didn't read uh, and tried to keep playing the game, or they read it and said, well, we can still push past it because. In fairness, Clubhouse is a very big map. You can yeah. very quickly get out of sight of those cameras and, you know, you'll be seen at the start of a push 
but there's still a fair few rooms before you're probably on your execute. So, for all that I'm saying it was the G2 sort of setup, it's not just Valkyrie, because it can't physically just be Valkyrie. This is too, of course. too vast of a play space. But at the same time, the frequency at which Valkyrie um, and Valk was able to pull that intel yeah. was... I really wonder why they did not go for a IQ, considering how much they... Well, they probably didn't know they were struggling that much with the cams. Well, that's there was, it. There was we only knew. one direct kill due to the cam, uh, which was, of course, that buck. The rest was... Well, some of the runouts, maybe you can, you can give out to that, but that could also be different information. But they might have not known that so many of these kills and so many of these rotations of G2 were being fed due to the Valkyrie, and then you're like, well, if it's not really a problem, why would we bring IQ? 5-1. Team Secret, you've pulled your conversation. You've seen if you can try and grow from this. Now's the time to grow. It's obviously the split on the half here, and I guess the worry is how much energy have G2 been able to build up and is it enough to carry them over as it was before, regardless of what the opponents start to do on the opposite side. Straight to the point was Virtue trying to cut off that body that's inside construction, but there's still work to be done elsewhere, including allowing the Habana to go through. Yonka sort of with a, hey, Virtue, uh, I know you're busy, man, but uh, I kind of need to cause you open. <laughs> you get rid of that new gemmer for me? Okay, thank you. And now to move on. However, the big question now is, do they know about the player that is playing inside the bath, uh, bathroom? And did, ooh, that's a grenade that's about to bounce up. Unfortunately, oh no, it's a Candela. Candela's indeed, and that means he's probably going to go for the push right away. It's Kayak with the first kill. Surely that is going to be the Ying in himself as well, as Virtue drops right after. Yeah, Hungry, I mean, doing what Hungry does. It's just synonymous, and it's just, at points, I think the first way of putting it is a pleasure to watch. Hungry using those candelas, using Ying to try and drive them away and drive that push. It's something which isn't, to be fair, the most common. It's not the most standard, but in the hands of the right player, my word, can it be effective? And Hungry is definitely the right hand. So it leads them towards this opener. It puts Slebon a sliver away. Any little bit of damage, any scrape, any splinter is going to be enough to sort of put him out of commission here as well. So he's got to try and make his way down to have some impact because he's still got a C4 and I think he can still put himself in a position where he oh, can no. cause some trouble. Very unfortunate going off the uh, angle at that very moment. They might know someone is still inside of logistics. There is also a lot of time being wasted here in the G2 site because it was a very heavy roam. Only one person was on the site for the majority of the round. And of course, some have rotated around now. Gumphy still holding from the top, though, looking to pick up Kayak because he wants to open up the hatch and he's about to walk into it as uh, Gumphy misses the shots here but gives away his position as a result. Kayak decides to rotate back and open up the hatch. I'm not quite sure what you're doing. You've been shot at so many times and there's 25 <laughs> seconds left on the clock and he's still thinking about going back there. <laughs> Gulfi's just going to get this kill at some point. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think Kayak really knew where that was coming from, and Gonfi's going to have to try and sliver his way down. But as you said, 15 seconds. What are you going to do here, G2? The spray comes around. They're still trying to drive their way through Kitchen Hatch. Kayak gets a double, but Hungry gets downed. And as we wait for those ex-Kairos, they've just got to throw themselves into sight. But there's a man holding the bottom of it. Pack Bull and G2. Just where did the time <laughs> go? Well, I know where the time went because it felt like a very slow round. Nothing was happening much except for the start, of course, where Hungry was able to toss in some Candelas that were able to get a kill and put Slevin down to 1 HP. But besides that, G2 really wasn't able to put up any control. And, and for the majority of the round, a lot of the people on Secret were roaming on that top and middle floor. That is going to be the second round for Secret. They stalled out well. They played the G2 game of, of making sure that a lot of time is being stalled. Maybe not so much by the Valkyrie cams that were supporting. Of course, we didn't see that, but that could just as well have been the case. Forrest is being brought out by Hungary now, not D6, but to the Ying. As we are attacking CCTV cache, it, you can you can imagine something with it. You also see the, 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 the shields coming out from Goyo, which can be taken care of quickly by a RCE Retiro. Now, if you, if you see this side, there is two ways to go at it. Um, either you're opening up on Plateau, which should be fairly easy, given the fact that you have a Maverick available. That shouldn't really be a trouble or a worry for you. Uh, and then you want to take control of either construction or garage. And if, if you really feel like it, you can take control of both. Like that, That's also an opportunity. But generally, if you have control of garage and Plateau, you should be able to go for a default plant. Of course, you would have to take care of the gas canisters and potential nitros to be tossed up to you. 
Just a simple player in the main lobby could be giving you a lot of safety there. And look at the amount of nitros on secret side. Three in total. To get it with the three smoke canisters that Keenan is bringing. It's a little utility that needs to be, well, baited out by G2. So the rolling Rotaros are on their way to try and start doing some damage. And there is the first take. Perfect use as it removes that Goya shield, forces Lounge into a much more uncomfortable position to be in. Sleban has to play further back. That means Kayak has a little bit more space. He can play further forward. Packbull is close to the danger and close to being able to apply some damage, but they're still steadying away. They're still causing some dramas. And that's the big thing about those drones is it doesn't really matter what you throw down. If there's no mute jammer there and there's no one expecting it, they can just drive on by. A lot of intel again, able to be gained by the Valkyrie cams that are located around the site. Of course, you can expect one to be outside, maybe one inside a garage, but mainly the one inside the construction is going to be the pain point. Retira will be taking care of the shield freely. No one is there to try and cancel it, and that means that suddenly a lot of the pressure that the defenders could be trying to put up onto the breach has just disappeared. Something G2 could use in the last final seconds as Kayak now on the drone. Camera will be spotted out. That is going to be a lot of the information denied. So G2 is working on that anti-information gain game. But there are still these players below that they need to take care of. And the question is, when will they do that? As it will be quite a big point with all the nitro cells that are available. Yeah, Gumpy's going for a pretty hefty rotate there. Going to see if they can make their way via blue and potentially restructure around the back of red stairs. It's generally how these holds end up anyway, is the top of red becomes that bastion, becomes that corner where you've put all the pillars and structure of your holds as the rest of the space around it becomes a lot more dangerous. That is where you move and rotate. Curious where that is going to try and find itself. Hungry drifts even closer, but will it just catch it? It does, just on the border. And that mute jammer removes it, allows them to have a little bit more access. Some angles there, it removes everything else that was otherwise stacked up, and we can start to see the flashes burn. Well. 30 seconds, the first C4 pops off. The fight on the door goes the way of G2, but it's the sprays on the site push that start to fall away from G2. Now, they're trying to construct something around all the wood and everything Everything else that's in construction itself, but Sleban is in the job of dismantling and he's doing a pretty fine work of it. Yonka slips past, past the cash and all the money, but he doesn't get any further and they find themselves spent. Secret. Find another round. Find another round indeed and we find ourselves in 5-3 as we speak. And then suddenly the G2 fans are going to be wandering back to the Gavana game. <laughs> where it was 5-1 and it ended up in a 7-5 victory for them, but you never know if that's going to be going the other way. And, you know, just alluded to it on the desk a bit before. If you lose this one, that might lose your top four. Well, I can tell you one thing. Secret is currently on your tilt. <laughs> um, they're also on six points. So whoever wins this game will be taking a three-point lead, of course, if it is in regulation, and will be winning that head-to-head. -head. That might be used in a tiebreaker when we decide who is going to the majors at the end of this stage. And we're on playday four. There is a total of nine playdays in Europe. So now we're not even halfway there, but you do want to make sure that the teams that are very close to you now, you at least have a head-to-head -head advantage over because that would give you, uh, give you a big help, a big push in the right direction once uh, the tiebreakers would be able to come around. There's no we're near close yet. Round number nine is where we are as we speak in G2. Well, they just lost two rounds in a row. Team Secret, of course, called their tactical timeout right before we went into the second half. And that is probably to discuss these last strategies or go for a bit of a mental reset. Let the coaches speak to their players. As Henry uh, gets his drone card out, he spotted two players around stock and will quickly be relaying that information that might be used to at least go for a bit of a roam clear, or even a decision to maybe even go for a bit of a quicker push. They're making sure that they have the control here of Garage, and obviously the consistent pick of the bucket can give you that immediacy, but it can also open up the strong verticalities from underneath too. It does mean that you then need to have a little bit of safety around stock to dig your way across. The sprays get close to a body, and that's the danger of the stock take, is there are still bodies that are ready and waiting and inside the bar itself. Steady approach 
here as they're trying to find another way through onto those mute jammers. It. There it is, caught just on the side of it. It means if that drops, that wall's going to pop. And, well, you've got to try and find the mute jammer first. That's what Virtue's going to do now. It should just be clear and open, able to be shot. It's a floating drone. No, it's... Is it? Oh, yeah, because the, the last part hasn't been shot, actually. Oh, wait, it is actually... Okay, <laughs> that is quite dangerous. There it goes. There it goes. Oh. There it goes, though. Packball playing for safety. Gets rid of that drone with the C4. What a good lad. Citizen. Very helpful. Still sets up on the far side. They're still trying to push these bodies out of red because they know how important it is to take some solidity here. You have to move and manipulate some of what they've still got. There is this extension and Keenan's got the mirror window in case they do decide to fall back. But look at the time that has been spent and look at the economy that has been spent here in terms of utility to try to get rid of Packball. Definitely so. He's now trying to go for a bit of a challenge as well. A lot of drones and now pre is coming through as well. Citizen in the meantime on the corner will be not shot by the shot. Could not take a single point of damage. Gets the kill onto Packball. Now the next hurdle G2 will have to go through is the mirror window that is located on the Logi office. And you're quickly looking through the utility that they have. That's a grenade. They can use that from the top through that hatch to try and take down Keen. And that will literally be the only way to clear him out. But for now, Kayok not deciding to go for that one yet. As he needs to open up the jacuzzi wall. The x will get rid of that mirror window, and that, of course, is also a way to displace Keenan. 40 seconds on that clock is a man advantage for G2, but can they make this stick, and can they translate this into a round? Well, they're trying to dig their way across now, get the pressure onto the gym window and the bedroom window itself. Hungry more than ready to send one of these very dangerous RC cars back to the deep corners. There's another mirror window to pop. There's a close angle, but Sleban is not currently home. The ADSs were, and, well, they are no longer. They still have that grenade, and they still have the ability to try and apply that if Kayak is steadily burning oh. through, but he does it with bullets instead. The drop comes. It doesn't last massively long, but Keenan's traded out in the meantime. Suddenly, it's only Gomfi with only a handful of seconds, but he can't quite find it, Citizen. Well, if anyone was going to drive the body through, it would probably be him. Uh, he's that well-known and renowned fragger on the side of G2. Even a discussion going about in the talent team here. Who is the better one? Shaiko or... I mean, Citizen? it's not a discussion in the talent it's, it's team. It's not a discussion in the talent it's team, a, that's for sure. It's a discussion on the timeline if you ever want impressions. <laughs> Either way, 6-5, G2 have secured themselves a point and the opportunity to fight for yet another three. And if they do successfully get that in any of the next three rounds, they will put themselves three points loose of the number five position that is currently in the league. At, at least I assume. I'm quickly checking because on the live ranking, I do see fifth place. So I, I might be doubting myself. I will quickly check to see. You do that. If, if I am spreading misinformation now. Hey, would you do that? Go on the I, I mean, line not, not, well, not intentionally. Okay. Um, no, if they win this, they would be drawn up with Navi. Both in nine points. And as they haven't, oh, they have played, Navi would win the head-to-head. -head. So they would be third place if they win this with three points. Or two points even. Even with one point. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> Cool. Actually, not with one point, because... No, no, with one point, because then Secret would, would yeah. jump them. So two points or more, and they will be in third place. But if they manage to get the three points here, they will be putting themselves three away from Virtus Pro and Secret, who are both on six, so they're equal on five, but both have the head-to-head -head loss over G2. So it would be very, very beneficial for G2 on their major chances for, of course, the Mexico Major that is up next. Ooh. But we're not there yet because we still have this round to go through and still another lot of play days that we have to go through. Hungry in the meantime will be playing on that Monty, looking to put up a bit of pressure because we are on that bottom floor. It's quite hard to take and some struggle with the roam clear the previous round. Of course, different round and different strategy of secret nowadays, meaning that not really any roam on the board and that means that G2 are able to starting to set up or start to set up for a potential execute. Yeah, it's a very different hold from them. They haven't gone with the extension. I think they expect G2 to read that and apply some pressure and it works two ways as well. We won't get absolutely taken aside by it if that is what they did, but if it is what they're doing and we're not there, they also will spend a little bit more time being a little bit more cautious further up. G2 aren't really that team. They did it, they did it quickly, and now they're already putting pressure on the hatches they need to with a lot of time left. And I guess that could be behind the bolster play of no more Candelas. Instead, we've got the Monty. We 
have this solid wall we can push down it. We know dirt is open. We know that's an option. We also can see it drifting towards blue. So that's another option of just having that back line, that anvil yeah. to the hammer. Camera giving away a lot of information here to the side of secret. So as long as that is up, they will know if it's going to be a motorcycle drop or not. Opening hasn't been fully made yet. Can maybe sneak through there as uh, an evil eye is attempt to be taken care of by Citizen. Gets caught off by an ADS, just recharged in time. And there's pings coming down on these players now. Keenan falling back to behind the bomb chassis as Hungry trying, oh, no. to, he's trying to sneak through. But he's a bit too thick. There we go. Lockdown, lockdown 10 pounds. Oh, there's a moment where he almost massively suffered. He was uh, he was sprinting a little bit further than he probably should have. You might ask why, but he knows why. And he pulls back and he pops up a shield just in time. It forces Packball slightly further down dirt, forces him into a little bit more of the site. And as I said, that's generally one of the two places you'll see the Monty. This is the most common and it allows you to corral. It's a very narrow pass. And in the best case, it also burns out utility. Packball isn't the usual smoke that'll often be down here, but he still obviously he has now used the C4. He has put a bit of a cost, and Hyfe being down has put a lot more pressure round onto the back of Packball. The back of Bianca is going to make things much trickier. The pop C4 doesn't get anybody, but the spray sure does. Five to three, and we've 30 seconds left. Seven. Secret. They're going to have to pull out something crazy. Kayak gets one, digs his way through one more. It's just slab and left. That back line is trying to do everything he can, but there's a Monty protecting the diffuser planter. They're going to just stand <laughs> in the way. With a snowman shield. You're not shooting at any of my friends today, not at least from this angle. Sleban is going to go around another. The pings are continual, but oh. so is the pressure. Great take against Citizen. 30 seconds, a post-plant situation. Monty still waiting to try and find the new angle, but Yonka finds it first. G2! Lock us out, 7-3. They have it, the JGs are coming in. 7-3 victory in the end. The Monty able to aid with the push, of course. Virtue uh, had to come and rescue him, or Kayaka, I have to say. It was either of the two, at least, inside of the dirt tunnel, because he couldn't really pass further. There was a Nitro Cell, there was a Banshee, there was a Mute Gemmer, and a player, of course, there with a shotgun. But in the end, G2 able to lock it off and grab those three points, propel themselves up to third place, and with that, distance themselves three points from number five and six in the league which might be even bigger and that's